The moment we have anticipated all week long with Apple earnings has officially come out and it looks like they're reporting some green numbers. So we're going to talk about that as we get into some technical analysis for the spy cues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, AMD, and Meta going forward today, maybe even taking a peek at Microsoft and Google and possibly some volatility going on into tomorrow. Remember, even though we have some good news from Apple going on right now with these green numbers, good print, we still get the data tomorrow and that is going to be much, much more important across the board um, than the Apple earnings. So we have to get into it. All right, so before we get into the spy, let's just look at the data real quick. And tomorrow in the morning before the open, we will actually get non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. And just remember that the reaction to the data is more important because these can be seen in two ways. If people want to buy up because of a strong economy, okay, growing economy, the stocks go up. But if they want to say, hey, inflation is a problem, then stocks can go down. So it's more important with these pieces of data to see what how the stock market actually reacts if there is buying or selling because of this data. That would be what I would pay attention to there. Remember, Remember at 9 a.m. though, we do get ISM services PMI. Now this one here is very blatant. If we tick up on this, it is not going to be a good sign for inflation and therefore we could see some selling in the overall stock market. So we will be paying close attention to this at 9 a.m. Remember, we could get a reaction in one way from the data that came out before the open and we actually could get an opposite reaction right after we receive this. So we will be trading like water. Something we do on this channel is just move around the rocks. These pieces of data are those rocks we just have to make sure to be on the right side to get down into the meadow and not end up in a sewer, right? Go down the stream. Now, looking at Apple right here, we're going to get into that in a moment. See that big upward move. But first, we have to talk about the SPY. And the SPY here, we do have those weekly ranges for you. And those came into play today. I had to update those daily ranges real quick. But we have some ranges for you to pay attention to for tomorrow. Remember to pay attention also to these purple lines. These purple lines would be the weekly expected move. And remember, we usually close a 68% chance that we close within this zone here. So if we get excited to the downside or something like that, that doesn't look like it's going to happen as these daily expected moves are kind of pretty, pretty level with it. So I would pay attention more likely to my daily expected moves. We can talk about these for a second. 511.15 to the upside and 498.91 to the downside. Still a big range for the day tomorrow. Remember, if we get excited here, we could be seeing something ripped away by the end of the day, maybe even at nine o'clock. So we have to pay close attention to the shorter time frames. We're going to get into those. I just wanted to show you guys how the daily looks like it is about to roll up. And if we roll up and go positive here, what can we do? Well, we can blow through this level. We could test this high or we can go make a new one. The thing about that is it's going to be on that monthly expected move. OK, so that monthly range upside could be tested at that point very early on in May. So we'll pay attention to that going forward. There's a lot to pay attention to. And we're only two days into the month of May at this point. So if you want to learn more about these, by the way, if you want these for individual stocks and to learn about them a little bit, use them in your trading strategies, you can join the Patreon or take the course. Remember, guys, the course is only 149 for the next 48 hours. OK, so I highly encourage you to go uh, click that link down in the description to get that course. It'll be good. Give you some uh, good education as far as the indicators and some strategies there in a bear market strategy for when volatility is up a little higher. We've uh, seen some upward ticks here. We just got to see, can we blow through this area here and get some kind of ABC pattern so we can either set up that lower high or maybe even go to a new all time high and see that ripped away in May. So we'll pay attention to that going forward. Now we are going to go into a two hour chart real quick. This is one that you're going to want to pay attention to tomorrow. Remember, the overall theory here is um, from that day, hey, we're still stuck. We're stuck in this area. We actually got this reaction down, which is very interesting because it touched that weekly expected move or just right, right above it by a few cents there. And then we started to buy back up. So those weekly expected moves coming into play today. And now we have to see if we can get above this high. But at this point, because this high happened a couple days ago, I would say if we can blow past this zone here for the spy, that's looking pretty bullish. And I'm really saying here that we could get some kind of squeeze going forwards. So just pay attention if we start to squeeze on a lot of stocks to the upside with some good data. If all that data is good tomorrow, we actually could get that squeeze because Apple just gave us some good news to give us a little push. All right, so we're paying attention to the two hour because what? It could curl up into positive territory on the MACD down here. You see the MACD very close to the center line, that curling up of the MACD. Hey, we could see a big push from the two hour and see this extend out for a little bit of time. And then halfway through May, maybe we see something ripped away. So we'll pay attention to that going forward. But the two hour looks like it just needs to curl up into positive territory. Now, this is something to pay attention to if we're not going to see an upward move. If we're going to see this fade, most likely we are going to come up to these levels, come up to the sell zone here, maybe even hit that daily expected move before nine o'clock and then see that bad data come in and see that 
pull back down. But the main thing you have to pay attention to here, the 30 minute MACD, if that just curls down into negative territory, what would happen? Well, we would go negative, right? We would test this low or go make a new one. And if you start to break down and close somewhere around here by the end of the week, well, then you're starting to make some new ranges here. The ranges might be something like this, right? So it might be a little bit lower. Therefore, the trend is going down at that point if we see that reaction. So the 30 minute, you're gonna really wanna pay attention to whether you're bullish or bearish, right? If you're bullish, you don't want this signal to confirm either, and this should tell you I should not be taking any more upside. So that being said, you wanna pay attention to this if whether you are bullish or bearish in this environment. Now, if we did see that drop down, what if we create some kind of 30 minute divergence down here? I wanted to talk about that because if we create a 30 minute divergence here and that actually confirms, and then we also see a two hour, then we also have the daily that wants to roll up, the push could come a little bit later, but we have to be open to that scenario. So if we're paying attention to a lot. It looks like we have the chance for a squeeze, but we also have the chance for this to be a um, gap up and then gap and crap down. The cues you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to, very similar things, right? So we're gonna do it a little bit backwards, 30 minute here. Well, if we do get that positivity in, look for this zone. This zone has been our sell-off zone, okay? So we pointed this out, and that's what led us to believe we were going to see some kind of pullback, some kind of a little bit dramatic pullback. Look at that dramatic pullback, okay, cool. Now that happened, can we flip to the positive side? Well, with this price action right now, you'd have to say we're going positive, but if that rolls over quickly, because we get data at 930, well, what if that just rolls down and then we create some kind of divergence or we don't create that divergence so we just keep going down with a negative trend? That very well can happen. And at this point, we just need some levels to pay attention to. So if we're gonna get up to the zone, where would we go to? Well, 433.67 is the priced in daily expected move here. And then 420.13 is the daily expected move to the downside. So we can pay attention to these levels. Why, if you wanna learn about these things, the course is there for you, 149. But right now you can just know this is all the options market has priced in for tomorrow so if you do see an excited move outside of this you have a 68 percent chance to land back within these red lines that's why they're very very useful they were very very useful on this big push here that daily expected move going right here right when we get above it what were we saying live because we go live every single morning and we happen to go live while jerome powell was talking for the end of the day as well and boom we see this reaction up and this is where we start to take profit because this is all that is expected and so people will sell in these areas and boom, look at that selling that came in. Now we're starting to trickle back up. We have to make sure this 30 minute MACD does not roll back over. What we need to happen to the bull side is see this two hour buy up, cross over, hold in positive territory for a moment. So if you're seeing that cross up into positive territory, good sign, don't have to be scared there. Just watch that 30 minute. You gotta be open to how you can be hurt by a trade and so both bulls and bears should be paying attention to that 30 minute curling over and going negative because that's how you bulls can be hurt so at this point two hour looks like it wants to curl up but is it going to sell off in this zone as this is the daily expected move now if we're going to see that squeeze we can blow past that daily expected move and when you get past it sometimes and we're going to go over tesla which is doing that right now it can use the top side as support and then start to head higher. So you do have that 68% chance to land back in this zone, but you also could, 32% chance, you see something crazy and maybe we do get some kind of short squeeze. If we cross above this high, really likely we're going to get some kind of short squeeze here. And the reason we could see that short squeeze is because the daily could cross up, that daily momentum could take over and we could see another positive trend that just rides that five day moving average up the whole way. I just wanted to point that out. Look how close that is to crossing. If we get a green day tomorrow, that can cross. If it goes positive, we can really see that positivity come in. And then we'll have to see if we're setting up some kind of you know double top, some kind of lower high, or even maybe we go to a new high and we're gonna we're gonna be reacting to the price action, telling you what scenario is most likely to play out as this develops if we get that squeeze. All right, Apple right now going way up, up 7% outside of its weekly expected move, all that good stuff, able to blow past this zone. So what can we do now? We can use this as support. Now, the thing we were pointing out on Apple multiple times was the divergence down here. The divergence down here, you know, I was leaning towards a good print from Apple and we're seeing those numbers come in green. They're announcing buybacks. They're announcing their dividend at 0.25 uh, per share. So uh, some good stuff here. Now we want to pay attention to well, this is the direction for now. We have to pay attention to that data. What if that makes us drift back down and then curl back up into positive territory? Because you're going positive here, you're going to want to pay attention to on the shorter time frames, just seeing that go up, curl back down to that center line and cross back up. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here because the 30 minute is going to be very overextended at these levels and it could just keep going. Like, don't think that it's earnings, but anytime now we're going to see some kind of pullback that does something like this. 
what happens on this MACD? Well, it pops way up like this, and then it gets close to the center line and curls up again. This is when the next move higher is coming. A cross up into positive territory means that positive trend will continue. So if you want to learn about that stuff, we have a course down in the description that can explain a lot of that. Now, Tesla going forward, this is one I wanted to talk about, and I, uh, I kind of put this white line here. This is what we've been paying attention to, this 180.92. Just below that, right here, right at this closing bar, we actually, that's where that expected move is. We wicked down back into the weekly expected move because we're above it right now. So we have the upside weekly expected move. We're above it. What do we say about Tesla? Well, pay attention because 30 minute rolls down, curls up into positive territory. And the positive territory thing here is very important. As of right now, we were not able to go positive. Someone actually in the chat, I can't remember who, uh, said they uh, took a play to the downside for Tesla. And this bounce right here scared them. But because they are uh, dedicated to learning, they know, hey, positive territory is very important. If that doesn't get there, then this could be some kind of fake out. It didn't get there and they were um, able to be rewarded uh, for their consistency and for their patience. And that is a very, very good sign. Now, if this just moved up a little higher, would have wanted to get out of that move. But at this moment, we're using the top side as support. Sure, we can see a dip down and then see that buy back up. So what I'd really be paying attention to for the next upside move is the hourly. The hourly just looks a little bit cleaner than the 30 minute at this point. If that sees any kind of curl up, we could see Tesla hit something like 205 next week. Real quick to the downside for Tesla, if we get some kind of bad news or something like that, we still have a 68% chance to land down in this area, down towards like 175 and things like that. So pay attention to this while data is coming out. We're going to be live and talking about Tesla during because it is outside of its weekly expected moves. Maybe I'll even put the weekly expected moves up on the charts for tomorrow and show you guys uh, that stuff. But uh, we'll see about that. As of right now, this looks like, hey, we're trying to use that top side. Are we going to be able to do something crazy or are we going to break down? And I think that is very, very dependent on that PMI. Amazon on the 30 minute we were talking about, hey, you got some good structure here. You have left head, shoulder, right right shoulder here. And then um, now we're breaking through. The only problem here is we could get some kind of retest again before we want to go higher just because you have this divergence that could complete. Now, if this divergence doesn't complete, well, we can just keep going. It's fine. Maybe we consolidate sideways and keep going. Or maybe that data pushes us higher and daily momentum starts to take over. We'll talk about that. But as of right now, you do have this divergence flatness of the MACD and a downward move here for the RSI, giving you that negative divergence there. So what could we see from here? Most likely some kind of small pullback, and then we could see that go higher in the future. So pay attention to this for Amazon. Is this a good place to take a position? At this point, you would say most likely not. If you're a trader for the 30 minute scale here, you would want to see this get down towards that center line and curl back up above it. And then you'd say, okay, the next big move is coming. That's really how you have to play moves like Amazon. Now we'll have to see how the reaction is to that good news. So just let this thing run. You know, we want to take stuff off the table once we start to hit those weekly expected moves. But on Friday, if you close up higher, well, you can reach for next week, next week's higher expected move. Now, NVIDIA, we've done pretty well with this. We found that little 15-minute divergence in here saying, hey, a pullback's most likely coming and where to most likely into this range. And I said, I want to test the bottom of that range. So the fact that this all played out is very, very good. I took this play on NVIDIA to the upside and was able to make some money in this. And then, or actually it was this push here, this little bounce here, I actually played this because it seemed very, very likely. And then I just took profit really, really quickly. Um, now, NVIDIA, I'm out of everything NVIDIA right now because I'm waiting for the next push higher, right? And it really looks like this 30 minute is still right by that negative territory. So it could just roll over. So if you're looking for a bearish move for NVIDIA, well, it's going to be this short, this, uh, this turning down on the 30 minute. Okay. And then we're going to complete some kind of cup, maybe get a handle and then break through this low. But if we're going to continue upward, we're going to see the two hour roll up. But first, before we show you the two hour, I just wanted to show you the structure on a five minute. I wanted to show you what you're looking for and why this is a little bit uh, worrisome in this area. We need to see some kind of strength as we break above this high right here. We need to see some kind of strength because what did we do? Well, we completed the cup, right? We got a handle. We got more handle. We got more handle. And then we're just fizzling up at this point. You want to see some good buying from breaking out of this area. Maybe this is people just lagging with some data that's coming out tomorrow and that data might produce some kind of bigger bounce because this here is a pretty big measured move. And this could lead to a pretty high price point for NVIDIA, if you just put that up there, well, where could we head to? We could head all the way up to where, back towards 900. We could head up back towards 895, okay? So paying attention to this, you wanna see some real strength coming from this. And I think we might 
get that strength with that data. Now, if that data is bad, we're going to talk about that 30 minute rolling over. We already mentioned that. But if you're wanting to see this get into positive territory and see another big move, it's going to be the two hour. The two hour really has to roll up here. And the reason I'm leaning towards this, we're going to touch on the daily in a moment. But the reason I'm leaning towards this is because look how big this cup is right in an important area. This could be a handle and we could see a very big move. So the reason I'm leaning towards that is just because of the daily, the daily's crossed up on this MACD and it looks like it wants to go above uh, positive territory and the RSI is above the center line. So slight tick up, I would say for the, um, bulls here in this move able to take back some moving averages able to have some decent structure we just have to see if that data gives you that big bounce because as of right now you you kind of have like a little edge to the bulls but there are still a lot of arguments for bears out there we have moving averages that are above us we haven't retaken the five or anything like that so we have to get above these moving averages in order to head higher and the data can push us up and that would confirm that cup and handle and then this would be able to go positive and we can look for nvidia maybe hitting a thousand dollars before I talk about AMD, we are still very, very open to more downside for NVIDIA. You have to watch that 30 minute MACD. And this is very important when you look at AMD here uh, is because or NVIDIA AMD. You have to pay attention to the daily divergence that is formed here. If we're able to cross back up and go positive with that good news that could come tomorrow. Well, then this could see a big move, a big reaction. This has been beat up for a very long time. I know we laughed about the P.E. ratio, but we still can get a big reaction from here. And that would be very telling. And the reason that I'm saying that is just because of the price action today setting up a two hour divergence. OK, so you have a two hour divergence down here on the RSI and the MACD at the same time. And what happens from that? It likes to roll up the daily. And we talk about this in the course a lot. So we were leaning towards this zone here. We had this zone marked off when people were asking how low could we go way over here uh, back on April 9th. But now we're seeing this flag. Okay, that played out to the downside. What can we tell from this? Well, it's building liquidity, first of all. So if it wants another drop, 30 minute rolls over, and then we got another drop down. But as of right now, we have a two hour divergence. We see that down here on the MACD. We see it on the RSI at the same time. Therefore, we have to be open to a bounce because what if that momentum reverses over and we start a positive trend on the two hour scale that would roll up the daily. We most likely would see some kind of squeeze. So I'm just having you aware that we could head lower but if we get some good news we could push past levels that cause some kind of squeeze now meta just doing a whole lot of nothing you would say but if you wanted to look at these shorter shorter time frames you would say okay this is creating some kind of cup and handle in this area so at this point still you want to take back 453.08 and there may be an opportunity for this to head higher so what i really wanted to look at was one the 30 minute i just wanted to show the 30 minute how it hasn't it has actually been able to build back into positive territory and if you really spread this out you can see how the cup and the handle have formed okay so you have cup and handle right around this level we tried to get excited a little bit but you overall do have the cup you have a handle now you got to see it break through that level and take back 45308 for me to get bullish on it that's what i would say for uh, meta now if you wanted to play some downside here i'd really be looking for this hourly to just roll over into negative territory remember the direction was chosen by meta with its earnings and now we can see that get close to the center line and roll back down and it looks pretty clean on an hourly so if this wants to curl back down take out this level here it looks like we don't want to lose that so we could see that break down curl over negative territory what happens we test the lows and or we go make a new low Microsoft doing a huge thing today, huge thing today, which is some confirmation, some confirmation that we are going to see some upside here if we can get some good news. Remember that behind these divergences, fundamentals are important at this time because we get data tomorrow. So you're not just going to see a random move, a random buy up because momentum's dying out and it needs a bounce. You're probably going to sit around and wait for that data and the data is going to dictate what happens with this divergence. You have multiple 0.2 hour divergences on the MACD down here and you have a triple divergence down here on the RS side which if i if i kind of scroll that out a little bit you can see how good that looks and you're right at that center line for the rsi which means hey that's you know the macd is the lagging indicator here so if rsi gets above 50 well what could we do we could head higher so first things first you got to take out this level you got to take out this level right here you see the little cup and handle we got going on if you look in the shorter time frames but as of right now if you take out this level you have a chance to test this one if you take out this level you're probably squeezing to a new high for microsoft and then we'll look for some kind of daily divergence but this was such a good play just because that weekly expected move is somewhere down in this area and we came out of it twice so i i, I am in this play and 
I scaled in over time with the divergences. I used it on a 30 minute scale. I just wanted to show you the two hours so clean and that actually did confirm and all we need is this MACD to go positive, take out this high and we might get some kind of squeeze for Microsoft. I'm still open to downside. What would that mean? Hey, I'm looking for this to any time now that it's curled up, curl back down into negative territory for the two hour MACD and I know, hey, we're most likely actually gonna break through this wedge here and we might head a lot lower. Now, Google's one that is also kind of confirming something here, right? Google is one that was outside of its weekly expected move to the downside, and now it wants to curl up into positive territory, getting that green impression on the histogram here. So Google overall on the charts here telling you, hey, my next move is up from here. And so pay attention, don't miss out. But uh, we have to pay attention to the data, guys. So most likely you're going to see some kind of cup and handle like this happen or something like that. But as of right now, you were kind of trying to get back within that weekly expected move. So good shot. We see some kind of bounce here as the MACD curls over into positive territory and as the RSI gets back above that center line. OK, so it looks like the direction for Google wants to go higher from here, which makes sense. Good earnings. What do we do? We curl back down to that center line. We curl back up. The next big move is coming. Google telling you that next big move could be coming tomorrow. One thing to keep in mind is volatility. I know we've talked about we could get some kind of short squeeze that very well could happen, but you still have this structure down here, which is a two hour triple divergence for the VIX and the VIX very well could turn back up here. So if this turns up and is able to go positive, that's the moment you really want to be paying attention. So we were talking about this live and just saying, hey, yeah, this could turn up and go positive. Going positive is a very important thing here. And you do have that signal um, on the spy that's overall saying, hey, I can roll down on my MACD as well. So just paying attention to the 30 minute is going to be very important tomorrow because this could develop a little bit more. We could see this dip down a little lower and then turn back up and those divergences would still be in play. So if we're going to see some kind of sudden drop, look for this two hour to complete and be able to go into positive territory that would be your sign hey i need to get out of my calls i need to not take any more upside in this area so volatility coming down to where we expect testing 15 we got that reaction now if it's going to keep breaking down and we get some kind of squeeze well what could happen uh, we could most likely go down towards 13 or 12 12 so pulling up the daily chart is going to be fun here because we're doing some cool stuff we're closing below the 200 and the 50. Remember, those were crossed for a brief moment. They have to remain crossed to get that crash signal. As of right now, it's crossing to the downside, and it looks like the daily might even want to go negative. So we could see this just fizzle out, come down to a price point of 13 with the, where this gap is, or even go down to 12.12, where we see big reactions for volatility. So I'll be paying attention to any time this daily MACD curls back up. That's probably the moment of the actual crash. So the main takeaway here is I would be open to both sides still going into tomorrow until we see the direction after we get some data and we're just paying attention to a lot of things. But the one thing to the downside would be that 30 minute doesn't want to curl over on that SPY MACD. Really don't want that to happen. And if we're going to see positivity, we're going to see that two hour curl up into positive territory for the SPY. So it looks like we could get either some kind of short squeeze or see some kind of pop and have that ripped away in the morning. So we're going to be paying attention and join us live tomorrow. Ask about the course if you have questions or join the Patreon if you want those weekly and daily expected moves for every stock we cover tomorrow um, and the monthly expected moves as well. But I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are um, having a great day. And I hope you have the rest of your day. I hope you have a great one. And I hope that you guys have all the luck in the world trading tomorrow. And I'll see you live. Peace. <laughs>